Hello there, I'm playing with some stuff again and today I got a packet from China from the company PCB Way and yes this is a sponsored video because they told me that they will make my PCBs for free if I mention them in my next video here and uh, well I thought why not so let's see what happens and I was pretty surprised they uh, had a good service and a good product and that's what I got I got two sets of boards uh, five boards is the minimum you have to order but they are so cheap I mean I have here uh, the bill it says board number one the smaller one five pieces 40 cent per piece is two dollar and the big one five pieces 40 cent per piece two dollars and 18 dollars shipping so shipping is way more expensive than the product itself but that's okay so at the end they gave me boards with a value of about 20 dollars for free and a couple of nice stickers with a chinese dog because i think they just had their new year and probably they are now in the year of the dog. Maybe it's from last year, I don't know. Chinese zodiac dog. Okay, a lot of dogs also for free. Well, I want to tell you why I made these boards, because there is a special story about it. But first, I have to talk a little bit about PCB Way. Uh, they contacted me via my YouTube channel and they asked me, hey, can you make a sponsored video for us? And I said, well, when, why not? I get my first order for free and you get your video. Um, then I started designing PCBs and in fact, that's the first PCBs I ever designed and ordered. So uh, the first problem was what PCB design program do I use, do I need, do I... So I wanted to use one that is free. There are a lot of free programs in the internet. For example, Eagle from Autodesk. It's a program you can have for free. And there is also uh, Altium Designer, which also has a free version. And finally, I stumbled upon KiCad. And that's also free. And what I like about it, it is uh, open source. So everything is free you can use it commercially if you want and what i like especially you don't have to share everything with others so you can share that you know, they have their own website you can share your projects you can download projects but you can also download all the libraries everything and you can work completely offline you can keep your stuff for yourself if you want you can share it if you want that's different from the others. Uh, you always have to be part of the community. Uh, you have to share it out automatically, uploads your designs to uh, their website and stuff. And you are also, with most of the free programs, you are somehow connected to an electronics distributor. Uh, they sponsored these programs and you automatically get the, the, the parts from their uh, sortiment. 
and uh, probably it's not a problem but if you want to uh, design something with parts that are not available from them it gets a little bit more complicated and KiCad is a little bit different you have parts well all the parts that people of the Kyo community have designed and uh, laid out and well you can do whatever you want and that's the reason why I've chosen KiCad and by the way, if you choose KiCad for uh, working with PCBs, for uh, designing them, there's a very good tutorial here on YouTube. Uh, it's from Winzer Schmidt. I think he may be a German, maybe not. Uh, there are, of course, a lot of tutorials uh, in the, on YouTube, but I think this tutorial is very precise, very detailed. He starts with uh, a simple uh, schematic diagram. He shows you how to uh, make footprints for uh, specific parts and uh, how to put the, the, uh, the PCB together and make the files and everything and how to uh, edit and correct things. So, it's very good and it, it helped me extremely with my first design because I, I never designed a, a PCB until now. Uh, I normally drawn simple PCBs by hand, etched it by myself, but they, those times are definitively over uh, because uh, it's so easy to use this stuff. Well, it's not so easy at, in the beginning. You have to learn it. You have to find out how certain things work you have to know certain tricks but with this tutorial uh, you certainly it's certainly much easier so i can recommend this one here but how did everything everything start well this is a dell rate controller it comes from a equalogic maybe you can see that here from an Equalogic uh, RAID system. It's a disk system that looks about this. It has two controllers. There are different controllers with different interfaces, with different colors. So this is the, the pink one, purple one. And these controllers have a problem. They have this board inside here. And that's a supercapacitor board that provides power for the RAMs here. Um, because these RAMs are used as a, a cache RAM between these, the host system and the disks. So to make everything a little bit faster, they will first write into this cache memory. And then when all the disks are ready and been positioned, they write it down to the disks. So there is a delay between uh, the operating system of your server thinks that it has written something and the time when it is actually written on the disk. So for a couple of seconds, maybe a fraction of seconds, all your data is here in these RAM modules. Now that's fine, but what happens uh, if your power drops somehow? You have a power outage. Well, your data in the RAM gets lost. There is not a problem with read data, but with the write data, because it's not written uh, to the disk yet. So you need a, a battery that protects this RAM here until power is restored and then the data can be written to the disk. So all the RAID controllers, all the Good RAID controllers have that. They have a write cache, they have a battery. Um, 
And of course, this is not a battery. These are super caps. They have 27 farads each. And the problem is they start leaking here. And the electrolyte goes down the pins here, creeps over the board, makes short circuits here in the electronic section, because everything is powered. We have uh, 5 volt, 12 volt, 3.3 volts, all kind of voltages. And electricity and conduct conductive liquids is something you shouldn't mix, because it will dissolve the copper. Now, here I have an example, a very bad example, like here. I'm not sure if it's visible on the camera. I can try that. Here, that chip. You can see that the copper tracks are completely dissolved. Even the chip had its pins uh, dissolved, they just fell off when I tried to unsolder the chip. So this is definitely, definitively a broken board. So, now comes the problem. You cannot buy this board from Dell. They simply don't sell it. If your controller breaks down because of leaking capacitors, you can uh, open a call with uh, Dell and they send your technician. He will probably exchange the entire controller. Maybe he opens it and just exchanges the boards. And that will cost you $1,300. I know that because we tried it. They offered us this service for 1,300 Swiss francs. That's about the same amount in dollars. Uh, there is, of course, a part number here. This zero, uh, I can't read it without my glasses. Part number is zero K Y C C H. But you can try to order that. They will say it's not available. Maybe they even don't have uh, any new boards. They probably refurbish them. There are companies in America that repair these things, but only on an exchange, uh, in an exchange way. So you send them in your home controller, you get a repaired controller back and they will charge you $1,500 up to $2,000 uh, depending on the model. Uh, yes, it's uh, an expensive damage if you struggle with that. So I thought for that price I could make my own board. And here it is. Of course it is not so easy because first you have to identify all the parts. Here I made a big scan, a big picture of this, trying to track down uh, all the PCB tracks. Um, identifying the parts is not always so easy because they are not clearly marked. They have some codes on it. You have to find out what transistor it is, what kind of chip this is. But, well, step by step you get a, a schematic for, for example, the analog digital converter that is on the board. There is a, a DC converter. There is a hot swap control uh, chip. And finally you made a bill of materials. You made a schematic diagram. You probably make a test board for, well, with all the pins lead out to, that's this one. And the finished version looks like that. It has some headers here to clip any uh, wires on and stuff. And there are the two connectors 
that are original from the Dell design. That was also a little bit tricky to find the right connectors because they of course use something special. You made a printout of the PCB design to be sure that it actually fits to the controller. It has to be relatively precise because uh, there is already an existing design and you, you have to, uh, to fit to that. You need a lot of uh, measurements, so all the holes must be in the exact position. You have to figure out about these capacitors, how they are connected, front side, back side, does everything go together. Yeah. And when you have all this data together, you send it to your PCB manufacturer and you get back your uh, boards. Now, one thing I was a little bit surprised was that when I sent them uh, my drawings here, my Gerber files, that's what it is called, um, about half an hour later I already got an email back and they had a little problem with this uh, PCB because I drawn I have drawn this uh, rectangle here on on the wrong layer. I I, I draw it uh, drawn it on a on the solder mask layer. Well, that would have worked too. But they asked me, "Hey, um, is this okay on the solder mask? Is is it not better to put it on the silk screen?" And uh, well, I wrote back, "Yes, of course, uh, that should be on the silk screen. That's." nice that you asked and well and it was really quick I mean I, I sent them the designs somewhere in the morning I don't know China is five or six hours back in time uh, back in time okay back to the future uh, and well a half an hour later they already checked my files and found an error and uh, asked me if I want to correct that and well that's pretty good and also the communication with the with the manager there was nice uh, I sent him a couple of mails he explained me what files he needs I asked him if KiCad would be okay and he said oh yes that's great we or working with KiCad a lot and yeah, I like it.